So it was a typical Philidor where white took on d8. Right. King takes d8. And this, it's kind of funny. This, I had this position with black. Yes. Against none other than a guy named Wesley. Wesley. Oh, I know a couple of chess players named Wesley. Exactly. So that Wesley, <laughs> whom I suppose all of you are familiar, played this against me and here Lenderman found Wesley's maneuver What he played <laughs> against me. And it's kind of interesting because you think that black is okay. You have the majority here and if you get to exchange this bishop with the c3 one, you'd have a good time. Yeah, bishop e6 is a very natural move. However, <laughs> however, this knight d2 maneuver jumping on c5. So the big problem with this king on e8 is that you can only go to e7 because you already moved the king to d8, so it can only go forward. Yes. Can't castle, that's illegal. <laughs> and if the knight jumps to, let's say, c5, any check will be deadly. Yes, so, uh, definitely don't want to end up with your king pinned to the back rank in, in a situation like this. This is practically lost because you cannot really develop your pieces anymore. You can already uh, go f4, f5. Yeah, just, just break it open in the center. The white rooks are perfectly placed and the black rooks are confined to the wings. Yeah. So a4 was played saying, no, 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 you're not going to b3. Yes. But then again, another Wesley plan that he again played against me. And that was the first time I was really impressed with a player. Yes, is this a3 preparing knight a2 to b4? Yes, that is very, very <laughs> close to the plan. Oh, that uh, maybe c4 as well. Yes, and c4. And then things just collapse. This is, an, uh, this is a maneuver that you see on the king side sometimes. Yes. Uh, in order to remove a powerful defender on f6, uh, white will play h3 in these e4, e5 lines, and then knight h2 to g4 to take off that piece. But it's interesting to see it in effect on the queen side. That's not something that's uh, very normal to me. And actually, knight a2 is su such a high class move <laughs> because it pre prepares to attack the c6 pawn. And this is why you need to show your Buddhist side when playing chess. Yes. You don't necessarily play a move a tempo, you kind of wonder, what is the weakness in my opponent's camp? Um, what if it's the c6 pawn? How can I reach it? Well, bring, let's bring the knight over there. Yeah, very straightforward chess, but uh, very difficult to stop as well. Yeah. But uh, it's a deep chess. It's yeah. a deep way of playing this game. Knight e6, c4. A bit more caveman-ish. C4 is a bit more caveman-ish. Yeah, uh, what I meant to say was logical chess, yes. right? Uh, his his moves yeah, are it's all more, for the same purpose. Yes, They're it's more of logic advancing. chess. It's not brute force. Yeah. So bishop d7, but when Lenderman sees a weakness, he bounces at it. And now the knight goes back and decides that the dispawn is the weakness now. So I'm going there. Interesting. Rook b8, knight f3 and says hello to the d7 bishop and this king is still stuck in the center suffering and the big problem is that knight d5 might come and that will be the beginning of the end yet again i did want to mention yes. uh, you said knight a2 and this is really high class chess yes. and i'm not sure it's a, that's a sentence that's ever been said before dennis i think that mm -hmm. might be original to you i don't okay. think anyone has ever described okay knight copyright a2 high, as class being high class high class yes <laughs> High class move, copyright by me. All right. You heard it here. <laughs> so b4, and this is kind of sign of a desperation. Take six, knight d5. And the problem is, just like in the Benoni, it was easier for, uh, for black to play chess. Right. It's much easier to play this with white because yeah. all your moves are just so logical. And that, that is why I praise knight a2 so much because after that move, it's all of the moves are just, just easy. Right. And meanwhile, black is kind of, uh, I think, floundering a little bit, yes. like you said, some desperation here. Yes. Bishop a6, look at all these Lenderman happy moves. Yes. Rook b8 takes bishop c4. And these moves might not be the objectively best, but they are easy 
He says, I have the bishop pair, you have a weakness. Just putting his pieces on good squares. What is there to complain about here? For white, nothing. Does he take the pawn? King e7, let's liquidate. I'm up a pawn, I have the bishop pair. There's no way things could go wrong. So let's fast forward a bit. More exchanges. And Linderman is a good technical player. Absolutely. He never rejects the option of exchanging stuff when he's up material. Bishop c6. But one thing for sure, he knows he wants to keep his bishop. Right. Because a rook end game might get drawish. Um, yeah, there's also uh, tactics going on here, yeah. right? If knight takes, if something like, I don't know, yeah. uh, g3 here. and then knight takes d5, then uh... Oh yeah, well one. this tactic as well controls g2, Yes. but a tactic for black would be if g3, there's knight takes d5, and yes. then this rook check picks up the pawn. Yes, and g, g3 instead, so if g3 then takes, and you pick up the pawn, but in any case, why go for that endgame? Yeah, just keep king the bishop five, on king c3, and this is again good technique. You defend all your pieces. Why give false hope to your opponent? Rook b3 check, king c4. Lenderman knows that the king is the strongest piece in the endgame. And then he says, Bob, push, push it all the way home. Let's go. Yes. Bob, you have one job, and, and that is to promote. Knight f4, b5. And even though pawns are equal now, nothing equals Bob. No. I'd take, I'd take Bob over all three of the king's yes. side pawns. All hail Bob. Yes. Okay. Rook a1, rook b2, and now Bob is getting stronger by the hour. Yeah, Bob's your uncle, Dennis. Yeah, Bob's your uncle. King b5, f5 takes. And sadly, when things go wrong, they go horribly wrong. You can't even win a piece when it's given for you for free. When it rains, it pours, as they say. Six, rook e2. He says, Alex says, no, passaron, you can't get through anymore. Just showing all the French that I know. <laughs> king d6. These grandmasters are very mean when they're winning in the end. <laughs> yes, they, they say, are. No, your king, it's over there. Yes. It, was, it was too close, move it further away. Your knight, you can't move that guy either. And probably the end is nigh as Alex is about to capture that guy on d8. Yes. And then Bob does the dirty work, promotes, and then Bortnik is probably going to resign pretty huh? soon. And yeah, if a move like rook b2, there's simply king c7 for him. Yes. Right, just defending this pawn. Uh, no hope of a rook and bishop versus rook. Yeah, no, 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 no to the idea of a rook and bishop. <laughs> of and course. Yeah. It's king c7, and I'll, after taking this knight, Bob, as we said, just does the business. Yes. All right, so that's a uh, big win for Alex. Yeah, uh, that, how many that points be, is that? Does yeah, that bring Alex Let's take a look. To? How would Lenderman do after a potential win here? So that brings him actually to two out of three. So he would be definitely in contention for this leading position in the group. Yeah. Alex, Alex is reaching to play the killer move of king c7. Ah, and it's on the board, we see. And Bortnik is about to say bye-bye to this game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, why don't we take a quick look at the Durbali game?